like to that we that would like to continue or implement on our campus. After we finish the questions we've prepared, there will be a Q&A portion where students in attendance can ask any of their additional questions. If you're attending virtually, all questions must be submitted ahead of time. So at this time, you can message the host of the meeting your question and we will read the questions out loud at the end. Okay, so candidates will have two minutes to respond to each question. Um, here's the time signal. So this is one minute left, 30 seconds, and this is who comes out. Um, and if a question is directed towards a specific candidate, we will clarify and we'll also sp specify which order the candidate should respond in. So to begin, each candidate will have two minutes for introductions. Please start by stating your name, class, and major. The remaining time is yours to introduce your platform and why you're running. So we're going to start with Shadman, Tenzima, and Gilza. In that order? In that order. Um, well, actually, give me one second to pull up my time. Okay, whenever you're ready. Can you okay. go back to the same stage that you have all time and have it set up so that uh, <laughs> so the camera is quickly? Or you can stand right there. But yeah. Okay, so hi, my name is Shadman Sakib. I'm a junior at uh, FCLC. I'm majoring in computer science and math. My minor is in cybersecurity. I've been the president of the coding club over the past two years. I've helped, I've helped students uh, become more confident in their uh, computer science classes, their mathematics classes. Um, I've been serving on that for a long time. Um, I've also uh, been a TA for a lot of the computer science classes, and that's how I've uh, impacted the foreign community. I'm running because I want to make USG more transparent for the students, and I want students to be able to have a space where they can go and speak about how to uh, organize their events, how to get funding for their events, if they're having any trouble in school, navigating uh, resources or navigating campus. Um, I know that as a freshman, sophomore, junior, I didn't know that there was a USG. And if I did, I probably uh, would have reached out for uh, questions about interviews or uh, opportunities such as BASTA or inroads that I found out about by myself. So if I'm running for, if I, with the presidency, I would uh, make these resources more accessible to the students so that they're uh, more uh, ready for the industry. Um, um, uh, my name is Tanzima. I'm a junior at Purdue University, and my major is political science with a concentration in human rights. Um, I have been in USG for several years. I started as uh, the sophomore senator, which was my first time physically entering Fordham because of uh, COVID and all that. Um, yeah, and one thing I've consistently been doing in and out of my positions, meaning like as a USU member and just as an independent student and as a human on campus, is um, creating initiatives and taking action based off of what students have expressed to me that they want. So, for example, when I was a sophomore senator, it was my first year here, and um, I had heard a lot of students speaking about the fact that the pass fail uh, option was uh, like taken away from them. And students were saying that like this, like COVID is impacting their mental health and Fordham should not be taking away uh, the pass fail requirement during such a such a, a severe right time. Um, so I created a, a, a petition boost on my page, which reached uh, 2000 students, which is more people than uh, USG's official account, the amount of followers they have. And yeah, that was just one of the things I've done, but my entire thing is that I will constantly, whether I'm a president or whether I'm a student here, as long as I'm here, I will be advocating for what the students want and creating initiatives and speaking out for the students' voices. Hi everyone, my name is Gielsa Politani. I'm currently a junior at FCLC. I'm a double major in international studies and theology. Um, I'm on the pre-law track and I have a specific focus in global affairs. Um, a little bit about me. And my parents are from Kosovo, so being all Indian is very, very important to me. It's something that I'm very proud of. Um, and just to connect that, I do a lot of global advocacy work, specifically um, about women and girls' rights, which I'm really, really tied to, and um, about sexual violence awareness. So um, my experience in ministry has been very much so start to finish. Um, I started off as a freshman year senator. I became the president pro tem my freshman year. I then became sophomore senator my sophomore year. Um, and then my sophomore year, I was really, really 
upset that there was no governing body on our campus that dealt with issues of sexual violence. So I actually founded the Committee of Sexual Misconduct on our campus. And my sophomore year, I also became the vice president of USG. And now I'm the president. Um, why am I rerunning and what, what is my campaign actually on? So my three points are community, access, and advocacy. So these three points are super, super important. And for me, community is really the most essential part. I think that my commitment and devotion to USG has always been purely for the students. Um, I've done everything in my power to make sure that students are feeling safe, they're feeling appreciated and heard on our campus, and that they're getting the most you know, bang for their buck um, at, while being at Fordham and really getting all of the resources that they can. Um, so I have a plethora of specific initiatives that I want to implement next year to help the student body do so. Thank you all for sharing a little bit about yourselves and your platform. Our first question is directed to Shadman and Tanzima. You both chose to run for president after working in other roles uh, for USG. What made you decide to run for president and how did your previous roles prepare you for this position? So yes, yeah, so I started off as sophomore senator and as I was saying, I helped create the petition that reached over 2000 students. Um, and I think, well, just for some background, I was only sophomore senator for a month because I was in a, a near fatal hit and run right afterwards. I was hospitalized for the entire remainder of the semester. So what I did was only within those 30 days as a senator. Um, and that honestly kind of empowered me and like showed me that like when it comes to speaking for the students' voices, if people are not able to rely on USG, then they have nothing else. Because the entire purpose of USG is to unite the students, to speak for the students. So after being in USG for years and seeing the incredible stuff, that the previous president, Joe, and that Gielsa has done, the CSM committee, all of the stuff, I've become very, very, very familiar with the inner workings of USG, and I have realized that there is a capacity to the goodness that we can achieve under our structure. So the reason I decided to run is because I want to work. I want to increase that cap. I want to do more, and I want to help in different ways, and that requires some sort of restructuring of how USG functions like at its core. So again, as I was saying, like advocating for students directly, act, acting immediately on what they want and what they're speaking for, especially when it comes to like majority students is really important. And yeah, I don't think that with the current system that we would be able to do as much as we want to. Thank you, Tanzima. Shadman? Um, I believe that as a student, the most important thing for our uh, from our university experience is being prepared for the industry, for being prepared to be professional. And my experience as a teaching assistant, as tutor, as a coding club president has pre prepared me for this role because of all the things that I, I had to learn on my own, I want to make more accessible to these students uh, who are coming in as freshmen, sophomores, and juniors so that when they get to this position, as a senior, they're not confused about where they need to go, how they're going to get there. And I believe that USG can be uh, a space that you know builds community, but this community is a way for students to network, build their professionalism, and also uh, you know these the events that we create can help students connect with other students, and from there they uh, you know build their own initiatives and do their own activities that can help them along in their journey throughout life and not just at the university. Thank you both. So our next question is a similar, similar one, but directed to Yazir. Um, you're choosing to run again for president. What has made you choose to run again? And what did you learn from this past year's service? Thank you. Um, so just to be completely frank, I don't need to be running it for president again. You know, this is not a role that a lot of people will do a second time because of the commitment and devotion that it does take to be president. Um, with that said, the reason I am running for president is that I have always had a very genuine commitment to our student body. And I don't feel that the work that I want to accomplish here is finished yet. Um, and I think from seeing the intricate workings of how USG actually operates, um, and the level of just responsibility and accountability that it takes to run the entire student government and 
also, you know, every club on campus does go through USG and holding that too has been something that I've been profoundly grateful and honored to, you know, be a part of. But I think that me rerunning is exactly for the reason that I want to continue doing work for students and ensuring that these goals that I've always had and the true ideals and the heart of USG is still being promulgated in the way that it should be. Um, so I think that's the exact reason why I'm rerunning. Um, I've seen, again, firsthand what concerns students are having and the lack of accountability that comes from a lot of administrative tactics um, and just building a community on campus with everyone. Because a big problem we have here is that Portland Media Center students don't really engage with one another um, the way that other college campuses have that community engagement. Um, so it's also something that I want to build more so on our campus, really building a beloved community among all of the Lincoln Center students. Our next question is directed to all of the candidates. What on-campus issue would you prioritize to address immediately if elected? And please provide a brief explanation and how it will affect students. Dioza, Shabman, and then Tanzina. So it's a very big question. I think that there are a lot of issues on campus that take um, immediate priority, but I think the way that you can encompass a lot of the issues is really this idea of community and how, because we are the governing body of all students on campus, so how do we as the USG um, cater to the student needs? And I think by doing so, we have to target community-based action um, immediately. And because I said previously that we have such a large issue in terms of Lincoln Center students really not wanting to kind of join the conversation or joining events, I think that it's super important not only to engage the community on our campus, but also to engage the community that surrounds us. Um, I think that a lot of the times we forget that we're, you know, bustled into this neighborhood and we're not thinking about all of the exciting factors and the people are, that are around us and um, who also need our help. So I think that for me, the priority would be to really bring in organizational work and other groups on campus to really further this idea and notion of what community means on this campus. Um, and I think the realization of that will be really, really great for Fordham students, especially because our whole like academic ideal of Fordham is to be a whole other community that supports one another um, with Jesuit values. So we really have to engage that, right? And what does that look like, I think, for student government? It's being able to do that for our own community, but also the community that surrounds us. Thank you, Shopman. So a big problem that I think we have on campus is that not every club, not every person's voice is always heard. I've had uh, people tell me that their club has not gotten the amount of funding that is necessary to fund certain events. To, to, there are some clubs who don't have a space for next year. And um, you know, I don't want to say that some clubs are more prioritized than others, but this is what it looks like is going on. And if we don't know what these clubs are fighting for, what these clubs stand for, how are we as USG going to support them, give them the right budget and uh, give them the space that they need to uh, host their events and meetings? And to address this issue, I want to be able to meet with every club by sitting in every week with at least one club and getting to know the, the president, the secretary, whoever is, is uh, giving the meeting that day, so that they know that there is someone on USG that they can trust, that they can go to if they ever need any help with uh, organizing an event or getting funding that they may not have uh, gone in the past or that would, may not have been as transparent in the past and they were scared to do because they thought, hmm, maybe I can't get this funding because there are other clubs that may be more important. But if I'm there speaking with them, they'll know. No, I matter. So community is a very big thing for me too. Thank you. Um, I totally agree with both of them. Community is a massive aspect into engaging our the students at Fordham and to improving anything just in life in general. Um, but one of the first things that I would do is find is like honestly just like acknowledge Fordham's failings. I think USG, again, after being here for a few years, I have seen how it works inside of USG and there is kind of a resistance 
to owning up to the things that Fordham does wrong. Because Fordham does do things wrong and these students on campus are intelligent and knowledgeable and aware of where Fordham goes wrong. So like one of my, like going back to my uh, earlier point of like having a general restructuring of USG in order to achieve the maximum capacity of good um, compared to what we can achieve right now. Uh, in order to do that, we would have to create some sort of way to be able to acknowledge that like, okay, Fordham in maybe when in mental health crises, like I've had several people tell me that Fordham doesn't necessarily respond positively to students experiencing mental health crises. I've had uh, students speak to me about how certain student groups like SJP, students, uh, the Students in Justice for Palestine, or even like other groups don't feel supported by Fordham and they feel very, very uh, opposite. Like they feel threatened by Fordham. So like, I think if we are going to be in USG and if we want to increase students being more active and, and involved, then we need to acknowledge first and foremost where Fordham has failed and that we in student government are not there to defend Fordham. We are here to defend these students. Thank you. Um, so I think you guys all kind of touched on this, but one of the recurring concerns um, at the Lincoln Center campus is the low retention rates for street clubs. What do you think is the root of this problem? And as president, what efforts would you take to come with this? Ulima, Dilta, and then Chapman. Uh, can I clarify a question? Yes. So uh, retention rate, you mean like there are not that many students showing up to the meetings for the clubs? Um, I think we're kind of referring to students join, but then students don't stay. I see. Um, do you need a clarification? I, I kind of have a question about if any research has been done on other colleges and how uh, retention rates work in other for other universities, just so we have like an actual basis to like go off of. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm not sure. Um, I was just kind of I'm sure this is a campus uh, an issue across all campus. But yeah, that's I'm not really sure it is. But you know, it is something that I think a lot of students are concerned about, specifically club leaders, um, and how to get students more involved in general on campus. So I am sure this is a problem even at the Roosevelt campus, at every single campus, where we do have this situation in New York, in New York City, where we're kind of mm -hmm. isolated. So, um, yeah, what do you think is the root of this problem at Fordham, and do you have any ideas for how to come? Um, I think in terms of the root of the problem, I think it's the same as it is for every other college, which is just that like students get occupied with their college life, with courses they're taking, and throughout time they lose interest and they're just not, you know, in it anymore. But I also think, as uh, Shaman was ref referencing, that like the budget is a big part of it. So like if students, if club leaders don't have enough of a budget to be able to like do outings that they want to do consistently, you know, et cetera, then like the the club leaders can't create these outings and the students involved in the clubs lose interest because of a lack of these outings. So I think that's also a big part of it. But when it comes to the budget, that's less, that's like very, that's like treasure type of information. Um, and in terms of how to combat it, I think- In progress. I think if we can kind of advocate more for students and let admin know that like, Oh, this club wants like for example like Daisy Chai has just has had so many incredible events this entire semester and they've had uh an increased budget as a result because so many people show up to their events so if we are able to advocate for these clubs that like oh students want to be part of this club but this club needs the money to be able to afford these outings that students are interested in um yeah knowing that the president's uh advocacy holds a very big weight um and then using that to advocate for them I think will increase uh public sentiments. Um, okay, so I think the problem with retention is that when you walk up the stairs of Lowenstein and you are waiting for the elevator, you're following someone in the corner, giving out pizza, advertising their club, but you have absolutely no idea what their club represents, what they are about, but you're just there for the free pizza, you fill out the form, and that's it. To address this, what we can do is um, we can make the events that the clubs want to host easier for them to host it. You know, right now you have to go through so many steps. You have to, you know, get approved by somebody and then they have to 
And then after that, you know, you have to get approved to put up a flyer. And that flyer, after it goes up, you can only put it up in certain areas. And then after that, you you can't put it in, uh, you know, open areas where everyone is going to see it. And these barriers to entry, if we fix them for club presidents, for club leaders, it'll be easier for them to uh, have more people come to, come to their events and clubs, uh, meetings. And um, another way that I would like to address this is again, transparency. I feel like a lot of club leaders find it very hard to uh, organize what they want to organize because they don't know like if they're going to get approved, how long it's going to take. So if they have somebody that they can trust, it'll be easier for them to go through these processes. And um, you know, we can implement ideas such as if you're giving out pizza, if you're giving out a soda on campus, tell them that this is what my club is about. You, you should have a poster when you're uh, doing these things so that they know uh, what you are advocating. Um, yeah, so Fort and Lincoln Center is a very interesting um, campus, I think, because it's different from a lot of different uh, colleges because we have a very much so a grad school type of lifestyle here. Students come and they go and everyone has their own lives and a lot of people don't stay for the events that we have. Um, while I agree with some of the sentiments that were made, um, as USG, current USG president, I have to disagree in terms of the funding and the space, um, because realistically, every single, we have the most clubs that we've ever had in USG history and the most in Lincoln Center's history. So we have more than 70 clubs on campus and each of them have a budget. Um, obviously the allocation of the funds is something that differs um, depending on how many clubs, how many members you have, how many events you have, and really what is the engagement of the students. But I think personally what I've seen from my experience and what I plan to continue working on is that students want to be engaged in a way where they felt supported and listened to, but in a way where also they're being supported in their own right and their own initiatives. So. I think that something that's gonna be super important in the following year is supporting student initiatives regardless or not uh, their affiliation with a specific club, right? So for USG specifically, if a student comes to us and says, you know, I wanna have a film festival because you know this is something that I'm super passionate about. We make that accessible to them and able uh, to happen. But in terms of the individual club basis, I think what needs to happen with clubs is that I think club leaders need to continue making the interesting, very, the meetings very interesting so that students return. And in a way where you're engaging the students that come to your club and ensuring that, you know, this is meaningful and this is worth their time. And also giving them the resources and opportunities that they might not get if they weren't in that club. Because realistically, if you're not super passionate about the club, um, if it's not, you know, maybe you're in a club because it's a cultural club, but if you're not, you know, Getting those opportunities. It's Can I add something? Um, no. <laughs> it's, but if it comes up in another question, you might add what your thought was. Another similar issue on campus is an overall lack of student involvement in campus activities, uh, including those that are university sponsored, uh, and one of which includes low student voting participation in USG elections. What initiatives would you plan to improve student voting participation and participation in USG initiatives in general? We'll do Shadman, Tanzima, and Jill. So the thing that I was going to add, and which also connects to this, is that the when you get emails about events and you get emails about when a certain club is going to meet at which point of the week, you don't get that email very often. You get it maybe at the beginning of the semester and then uh, randomly in the middle of the semester. So if you miss that first email or the sec or the email that comes in the middle of the semester, you have no idea what's going on on campus. And the boards where you put up the flyers are just so small that you never see them. So we need to make sure that there are more spaces where we can put up the boards. There are more emails going out to students letting them know that there are these events that are going on on campus because everyone is busy. If you miss an email, you know, you'll, you'll have no idea, you know, if, if the club that you like is meeting on this Wednesday that you're free, because it's just so far down your email list. And, um, you know, not everyone is going to pay attention to everything. So 
the first thing that we need to do is is uh, be more proactive as as USG by sending out more emails and finding more places for clubs to uh, promote their events. Yeah, can you? Sure. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Sorry. And another similar issue is an overall lack of student involvement in campus activities. This includes uh, university sponsored events, USG. Uh, uh, sponsored events, and one of which also includes low student voting participation in USG elections. What initiatives would you plan to improve student voting participation and participation in other the, uh, in other events that I mentioned in the question? I think specifically with uh, USG sponsored events, we we actually kind of sort of started it. Kind of we did, we let me restart. Sorry. <laughs> with like USG sponsored events, there needs to be an emphasis on creating an event based off of what the students care about. I think a lot of what we do within USG with very good intention, but not the best follow through is we do create events based off of what we think the students want to see, um, rather than just asking the students what they want to see and then doing it, you know, so I think when it comes to like within USG itself and in terms of like, again, the idea of just restructuring some part of USG so that we are able to, again, achieve this capacity of like being able to help students and be a resource for students is to be able to have direct communications where we, with students where we tell them and we ask them like, what do you want to see? Like, what do you want? Do you want a party at the end of the year to start the graduation? Do you want, you know, a, a potluck, a, pit, a picnic? Like basically asking students what they want instead of guessing what they want and then being unfortunately, but expectedly disappointed when they don't show up for the thing that we just guessed that they would want to show up for. So I think communication and just like a more proactive uh, uh, club functioning is, is necessary in order to uh, increase any participation. Um, so I think that it's, it's a very tricky situation on this campus in terms of student engagement because I've seen firsthand that you can do all of the things you mentioned and still there's a possibility that you'll have an event and you know three students will show up. I know I had the former president of Kosovo, the president of a nation come, and there was a very low um, attendance rate. And I think again, this goes to a lot of fundamental issues on our campus, but I think to correct that. I agree in terms of the sentiments to have initiatives that students are wanting, but as USG members, that's exactly what we're doing in our role. Our responsibility is to actively be having conversations with our student body to know what, what they're lacking and what they're wanting from USG. Um, in terms of trying to correct certain situations, like, for example, voting numbers, I also think that social media and the advertising of it is very, very important, right? So this year we have started prioritizing social media more than we have in past years. Um, and a part of my campaign plan is also to enact a new ad hoc committee on social media outreach, which is going to be super important. But again, I think that, you know, students get a what's happening email from OSI every single Wednesday. So it's also on all of us to kind of make sure that we're looking at those things, but also engaging in university events and being supportive of the students around us and also you know the events that are being had for our betterment um but i think that as usg members we are definitely held to a higher standard of trying to figure out what exactly it is that students are wanting and what they're lacking can i add something i didn't finish my time remember i live in the middle of <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, um, you said, so you yeah, know. once we've lost the <laughs> um, I'm sorry, but like I said before, if it comes up with another question, you can voice um, your thought. If you want. Um, okay, so the next question um, one of the purposes of USG is to voice an accurate representation of student concerns. Um, for example, um, USG was able to speak with um, administration leaders about the perspective on lifting the COVID 19. Um, vaccine mandate. So how would you ensure that your insight represents the larger student body's perspective? What policy would you implement to gauge student concerns and foster an open dialogue between more students in USG? So it deals with Sean and Tinsley. Yeah, um, so again, I think that 
the entire representation of our USG is the fact that we are being elected by the student body. Um, so the students want you in that position if you're being elected to that position. So it's your most important role to make sure that you are consistently and continually having conversations with your class to really reflect that and see what it is that they're lacking. And that's why office hours are super important. Posting office hours, even um, posting office hours with a specific focus. So if it's about the COVID-19 vaccine, um, let's talk about that. Also, another thing is that going forward, if reelected, I'd want to host more town halls in a way that provide forums for students that have a specific focus for specific issues. Um, because this way students can feel comfortable in sharing their concerns with us so that we actually get feedback that we can work on. Um, but I think any member of USG needs to be having conversation after conversation with their student body so that they know really what the situation is on campus. Um, and just strike up a conversation. I think that it's a very wholehearted thing and seeing you know, what students need to have their experience be better. And I also think you can engage this in your classrooms as well. There are so many times that these topics come up in a classroom setting. And I think that a lot of us just disregard them after we leave the class. But be super mindful of that. And I'll always be taking notes and there'll be so many classes where I'm like, okay, this is a perfect issue to talk about. Um, and I also think that it'll be super important going forward to have um, a platform electronically that will allow for these concerns to be felt. Um, and our Instagram is a really, really great way of doing that. Um, and that's usually where, where I speak to students one-on-one. -on -one. So the purpose of Fox News is to give out the news, right? But they don't always give out the right news, do they? So we could say that the purpose of USG is to speak to the students, but if when I'm running for president, people ask, there is a president, then obviously you're not giving out the right news. As uh, you know, if you take the Fox News analogy. So again, to address these issues, we need to send out more emails, speak to students more, make ourselves accessible to students by showing them that we're with them. And the way that I'm going to do this is by coming to every club's meeting so that they know who USG is, who I am, and that they can go to somebody to help them with what they need. And to address issues such as uh, the vaccine mandate, there are things that are universally uh, necessary for the university to run as a whole, like getting a COVID vaccine. Now, you know, we can discuss whether vaccines being mandated and if you don't get a vaccine, you can't come to campus is necessary through stuff like uh, town halls or surveys that we can send out uh, via email or uh, post in our own uh, private meetings that we can have with club leaders because I believe that no student knows about any USG members office hours. Because again, the purpose of USG is for the students, but if no one knows about it, then obviously that's not the purpose. I just want to say, um, I'm also going to do 10, there's 10 seconds left, just to give you very further heads up. 30 seconds left. Oh, sorry. That's just, I thought it was like zero. Sorry. No, no. this is like, ah, go be using my debate. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I've had a coffee. Yes. One of the purposes of USD is to voice an accurate representation of students' concerns. For example, um, USG had the opportunity of speaking with the administration to voice their perspective on lifting the COVID-19 mandate, vaccine mandate, sorry. Um, how would you ensure that your insight and what you give to the administration represents the larger student body's perspective? What policies would you implement to gauge student concerns and foster an open dialogue between more students and the Okay, um, that's a really good question. Um, I'm kind of doing it right now, and I've been doing it since I joined USG, which is literally just asking students what they want. 
So like currently what I'm doing right now is I have a, a Google link to a form that you guys can find like all over my social media and probably other people's social media. Um, it's a Google link to a form where you can submit any complaints, any concerns, any ideas, any positive feedback, even anything you want uh, regarding not only USG, but uh, regarding Fordham University in general. And those, those, everything you write goes directly to me independently. And the idea is that if I'm elected president, then I will be immediately working on those topics that students have talked about. Um, and I've already had like several topics uh, from that form, but I think within USG, of course, there is a lot of, there's, it's bureaucracy. So there's a million different like roadblocks and things kind of preventing us from being as direct as we want to. But I think, by working to just restructure the way USG is, like for example, um, like a committee we could add is a committee that works for change on topics that like Fordham doesn't necessarily agree with, but that majority of students agree with. So like I've already mentioned a few of those topics already. Those students exist on campus and those students are, are, are loud and intelligent and they're passionate about those topics on campus and they have nowhere to put that. In. So I think if we had a committee on USG that worked specifically on those topics, letting students know that they are allowed to pro protest, they can legally take like political action in front of like LC or on the plaza or this or that, kind of like how the graduate workers are doing this right now. All of this stuff, like basically have USG again be a place where students feel like they can, <laughs> I'm sorry, the, so where students feel like they can come and they can feel like supported, where even if USG doesn't necessarily have the power. Thank you. So furthermore, given the lack of diversity at Fordham, how will you ensure that you are representing the voices of underrepresented students equally? What efforts will you take to amplify the voices of cultural clubs and concerns shared by students of underrepresented backgrounds? Tanzima, Dioza, and Shad. I think for underrepresented backgrounds, it's very, very important for, uh, for us to have just kind of drive and motivation and to keep trying. So like I was saying in my previous, I was about to say my previous answer, which is that USG is full of students. We are students just like you. We don't necessarily have like admin power, but we do have the ability to communicate with admin in the way that the average student might not be able to. So it becomes my responsibility, our responsibility in USG to constantly, like incessantly advocate for these students who are underrepresented or who are discriminated against in some way, or who are very clearly like uh, being censored on campus for, for immoral reasons. It is our job within USG to advocate for these students to hire admin. And I think too, like this is something that goes into the specific person you elect. Because it, I think it does take a person with a, with a special kind of grit to be able to directly kind of advocate for students head to head after hearing that there is nothing that can be done for these students and after knowing that something should be done for these students. And this goes back to that committee for change that focuses on giving students options. When the admin tells them no, we tell them that there is a way you can legally, rightfully, peacefully and correctly continue on in your efforts, even if, or or just like even without uh, admins support necessarily. Um, so for me, I think that this is a very, very important part of my campaign and a big reason why I even started on MSG. Um, and I think that this year we actually did a really great job when it came to diversity, and we can really thank that to our diversity, equity, and inclusion chair, Lydia Williams. A round of applause. Um, and I think that it's really important to have these conversations and dialogues about these topics without having this kind of veil of shame when it comes to actually having a conversation. I think that a lot of times we sway away from having really tough, meaningful conversation just because you know it might be uncomfortable and it might you know, force some people out of their comfort zones. But I think that with my campaign and with, um, if reelected, it would remain one of my largest priorities to continue that um, and further diversity, equity, and inclusion on campus in a way where, you know, we are representing the people that are on our campus. Um, and I think that something else that's super important is another point that I have in my campaign is that 
under my administration, every single representative of USG would be assigned to three clubs um, throughout the year. And then they would be responsible for being this club's point person and meeting with them multiple times, um, whether that be monthly or whatever, um, and going to their events to make sure that these clubs feel supported and that they're being reflected. Um, and I also think that what's going to be super important in terms of really furthering conversation is getting the right information to do so. So as like a Muslim Armenian woman, I felt really uncomfortable with the fact that, you know, Islamic studies was not something that was readily available here. Um, and there's a lot of classes that, you know, weren't offered. And then I took an Islam class finally, and my whole class pushed for that to become uh, a minor. So, you know, I think it also takes student action and really coming together in a way where we're amplifying the voices of those who are being silenced or that are voiceless. And I think that that, since my freshman year has been, you know, very core to my commitment to USG. Thank you. Uh, so to address the diversity issues that we have on campus, what uh, I would do is through my weekly meetings, I would speak with the club um, representatives and ask them what barriers of entry they experience while they're trying to uh, create these diverse events for, um, you know, niche cultures on campus, such as uh, the Latinx community or uh, the South Asian community. Um, and through our conversation, I will try to understand where these barriers to entry uh, or how these barriers to entry can be fixed through uh, me and my fellow USG members. And um, the first step is conversation. And from there, I'm going to build um, through uh, weekly meetings with my USG members. I'm so sorry, can you repeat it? Yes, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Furthermore, given the lack of diversity at Fordham, how will you ensure that you are representing the voices of underrepresented students equally? And what efforts will you take to amplify the voices of cultural clubs and concerns shared by students of these underrepresented backgrounds? Um, I think, like I said, it just goes back to advocacy for these students. In terms of underrepresented backgrounds, there is a lot at Fordham, a lot of POC, a lot of like Muslim students, a lot of different groups that are that feel underrepresented. And I have spoke with with majority of them and, and what their thoughts are on like just being at Fordham and having these experiences where they feel where, where they feel ignored. I think in terms of like our ability as president, it is like our job to be able to speak for them and to advocate on their behalf. And to what we can do is have USG kind of promote their events and to help them out, like personally, in terms of their clubs and their their backgrounds and their cultural clubs, etc. Um, and to help them out with their uh, their events and their meetings and their uh, entire purpose when it comes to how they're treated at Fordham. Thank you. Um, so transfer students and educator students are also among the underrepresented groups um, at Fordham. Um, they can also have a difficult time engaging with student activities on campus. How will you work in conjunction with different clubs, communities, and groups to make on-campus events more accessible for students acclimating to Fordham and those who live off-campus? So deals there, James Ema and Munch. Um, I understand this fully because I'm a commuter from, from Long Island and my commute is like three hours daily. Um, so I think a big part of my administration has been making events accessible for students and just not doing events at 9 p.m. like on a Tuesday because it's not fair. Um, regardless of commuters or not, uh, a lot of people have jobs, a lot of people have internships. So how do we as USG members make it accessible enough for students to actually be there and not have to you know, rush home or be nervous about taking uh, public transportation too late? And so I think, that would remain for me specifically because I am a commuter, so I understand it uh, very, very well. Um, but I also think that USG has a responsibility to work with other clubs um, to ensure that not just commuters, but every single student on campus is feeling comfortable enough to be able to attend the events. Um, and if it's 
a problem like, for example, like if you're having a speaker event, we've had the Manhattan DA's office speak multiple times. Um, instead of just doing it purely in person, we can also add that virtual aspect for students who, you know, have not had the opportunity or just can't sit in. Um, and I'm not the most tech savvy, but I would work on that more so. But I think that that's super important. And I think students um, want to come to events sometimes, but they just can't. And I know that's been my experience for a lot of times. So. Um, I'm also a commuter from Long Island, so like I feel like it's so hard and that it's, it's like impossible, especially with like all of the events we've been doing for like Sexual Assault Awareness Month and like trying to organize them so that like people who are residents are like mo more like inclined to come to them, but also making it like, equally uh, appealing to commuters. It's definitely like you, you kind of have to have the perfect balance and then sometimes something is more catered to commuters and less catered to residents and then vice versa. So I think just understanding that like all, whether you're a commuter or resident, whatever uh, you identify as, I guess, no, like whichever one you are, um, if there's going to be times where events are more catered toward commuters or events are more catered toward residents. And that's just a little bit more on the inevitable side, especially like big, big events, like for example, like uh the ball that rose hill throws at like 12 p.m until i mean 12 a.m until like 3 a.m that is something that like commuters and residents will both just kind of have to struggle with but i do think that when it comes to having events more catered to commuters having a zoom option is like essential and honestly i would even do a zoom, op a zoom option for all classes when it comes to like uh attendance and being able to attend especially when you feel like you're in the middle of like crazy events Uh, so I'm also a commuter student, and um, <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, it's definitely hard to know everything that's going on on campus. Uh, but to address it, what I would do is try to speak to students more, try to strike up conversations with um, the community more, and try to understand why you know it's it's difficult for them to come to these events and try to you know just. Uh, maybe the times that they're being held at, or uh, the place that they're being held at, or um, you know, maybe some people may feel shy, and um, I can work with the clubs to understand how they can make the events more inclusive for everyone that shows up. Um, and I can also, we can also, um, you know, stand in the plaza and uh, hand out flyers and tell students, you know, this is the event that's happening this week on campus, come at this time. Or um, we can uh, send out more emails telling them these are the events that are happening. And definitely, definitely, Zoom is a very uh, necessary thing to include in these events. But, you know, there might be some events where Zoom uh, if you attend via Zoom, you may not get the, the best experience. So, you know, we would also need to work on how, for those events, uh, we can accommodate students that cannot show up. And if there is, uh, you know, a different time that we can hold, like part A of the event and then part B for the, uh, the students that can attend during the regular time. Thank you. An ongoing topic throughout this academic year has been the overall union activity on campus. Fordham, uh, Fordham's Graduate Student Workers United organized a walkout this week in response to a standstill in negotiations, and the resident assistants at Roseville have recently voted to unionize. How will you ensure that USG uh, supports student concerns during this time and fosters a clear dialogue between faculty, students, and the administration? Shadman, Tanzima, and Diosa. I would make sure that USG echoes the student opinion by not standing in their way when they are protesting, when they are uh, handing out flyers, and when they are uh, promoting uh, freedom. <laughs> And I would try to, if there are uh, conflicts that arise, I would try to understand 
why the conflict arose and uh, try to explain to whoever this issue is um, uh, affecting or um, you know people may not agree or disagree that this is part of democracy this is their right to do this and as a uh, school in the middle of New York which is the most diverse country of I mean uh, city in the world they have the right to do uh, stuff like this in front of campus so uh, if there are any issues with this I would try to speak with the student the faculty and uh, whoever it may be to understand how we as the USG or uh, the union members uh, can help them understand our perspective and what they're fighting for. Um, thank you, Mr. Yeah, I completely agree with everything you said. And I also believe uh, that this connects to my, in terms of Committee for Change, I think what we sh need to do specifically is look into Fordham's guidelines when it comes to protesting, which I've already done because I'm currently working on taking political action on the 6% tuition raise with uh, other like-minded students who are outside of history. But whenever it's a topic like this, whether it's union workers, grad workers, or, or like RAs, whoever it is, I think USG has to be a place where students feel comfortable and supported when they're speaking out against some sort of uh, immoral and unfair treatment from whether it's Fordham or the government or whatever it is. Um, and I think that my, my committee will establish that. So when it comes to, like I was saying, looking into the rules of like taking political action that Fordham has, because it is a private institution, so it's a little bit different than uh, like America. <laughs> but um, looking specifically into those rules and uh, communicating them to the students who want to support, whether it's the union workers uh, protesting or whether it's a protest they are trying to create. I would make sure that all students are aware of the options and the opportunities that they have to be able to take this political action. And in terms of like student government, like uh, internally supporting these things, 100%, I think, yeah, I think if majority of, of, of the students at Fordham are interested in that topic and want to support that topic, it is USG's job, it is literally our obligation to also support this topic as representations of the Fordham community. And I think there has been instances where we haven't supported it. And I think that's important to acknowledge and important to say that like, this is a, a, a drastic change that needs to be made in order to, again, restructure USG to be a place where we can achieve the most, pos the most positive possible good. Um, yeah, so I think that for me, I'm a firm believer that anyone who feels that they are being treated unjustly has the right um, and the duty to, you know, protest or dissent that specific action. Um, so with this specific in instance, um, actually, we've been having very in-depth conversations about this topic. Um, and just start Fantastic answer from this oh, sorry, oh, no. majority of our meeting. Um, and we'll also be taking it to our general Senate meeting on Thursday to discuss it as a full Senate and really get into the nuanced perspectives of um, the protest and the strike. Um, but I will say that as USG, it is our responsibility to not make any decisions when we're not well-versed. So that's the one thing that I wouldn't want for any member of USG um, to just make blatant statements without having the full story. So for me, it's been super important to actually engage with this issue and know the nuance used to it. Um, and I've had multiple conversations now with administrators, with students, um, with grad students, to really discuss what the core issue is here. Um, and I've also you know, submitted some sort of a claim to the negotiations at Fordham um, email to see from there. And I think what's gonna be super important is that as members of USG, we kind of have to kind of, divide ourselves from the issue entirely and see what our students want and what the representation and general consensus is from students and then react from there. Um, because the last thing that we would want as a USG is for anyone on this campus to feel um, you know, mistreated or feel that the administration or that the students are not supporting them. So 
I am in total support of every single student on this campus. So for me, it's super, super important to be able to do the work to support them. Um, and not just say I support them without actually having the knowledge behind that. So yeah. Thank you. Um, so during your sophomore year, Joseph, you helped found the U.S. based Committee on Sexual Misconduct. Um, another committee that was created in the House Committee, Ad Hoc Committee, was the Humanitarian Aid Committee. Um, how do you see the future of these committees and how will it continue to support the student body? Furthermore, do you have any plans for creating another committee and what will it take to accomplish that we're doing in Canada, TSA, and in China? Um, so the Humanitarian Aid Committee actually exemplifies what I aim to restructure USG to be, which is in terms, in case like anyone doesn't know how that committee was formed, it was it was multiple students who have never attended a single USG meeting who are from Turkey and who know about the earthquakes, the devastating earthquakes that were happening in Turkey and Syria, and they wanted to take some sort of action and raise funds and help their family in those countries. So the students who have never been to a USG meeting came to us to uh, form a club, TSA, Turkish Students Association. We could not create this club for reasons that were out of our control. So the process of creating the club was elongated because of, like, again, higher ups, because we're not, you know, we're still just members. Um, so we proposed an alternative, which is you can create a humanitarian aid committee. This committee, oh, this is not taking up my time. I'm just explaining all of this. But I feel like you guys need context. Um, but, okay, I'm explain it. Point is, the process that it happened, this is, this exemplifies how I want USG to function. This is the first time out of years of me being in USG that I have ever seen a student who does not have any interest in USG come to USG because of a topic they are passionate about and like something actually happened. We did something and we created this humanitarian aid committee. And actually right now I'm working with them to do another fundraiser for Sudan for the civil war happening and for the families who are affected by it, which more news on that later. But point is, this is this is how USG is supposed to function. People are supposed to know that like, if I want to help, you know, this country, this topic, this issue, then, and I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I have no sort of like bullet point of like what to do. I can go to USG and they will, they will help me. Even if they can't create a club, they will find an alternative. They will, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I think kind of the most unfortunate part of this is that I've only seen this happen one time. And so my, with me as president, it would be, you know, more constant. Thank you. Um, so I was the, actually the first to ever start an ad hoc committee on our campus. Um, so that's the pioneer, if you could say that. Um, and it was very daunting. It was really scary. And I think that I was worried about, you know, the whole system of it. Um, but it was the best decision we ever could have made for USG because the CSM committee um, flourished and it was super empowering to so many people. Um, and I actually have seen firsthand multiple situations where students have come to me in every single role that I've been in, um, and there's been action behind um, USG's work. So I think that that really does embody what USG is for, and that students should feel comfortable enough to be able to communicate to us in a way that you know continues the work that we need to do, because that's essentially the, the essence of the United States government. Um, and after I... Uh, established CSM, then Lydia established DEI, and there's been so much influential work that has happened from DEI. And if I'm reelected as president, I think that this is just something that I want to continue and something I've been doing also throughout the year because we've been supporting student initiatives from the beginning of my administration and also having students come to USG meetings, talk about specific concerns and seeing what that is. Um, I was especially, especially very, very happy when we were able to establish the Humanitarian Need Committee um, because the way that club registration works is it is a longer process, but there's a reason for that because we don't want clubs to go null and void and we're just giving funds to clubs that we don't know will be, stay there and take away an opportunity from someone else. Um, so with the humanitarian need committee, I had multiple students come to me concerned and I was beyond elated that they were comfortable enough to do so. So I offered them actually three options that you wish they could use USG funds for resources and for fundraising. 
um, and anything that they needed as general members, which anyone can join the MSG. And then I said the Humanitarian Need Committee, which they could use the resources as well. And then TSA was actually expedited quick and became a club faster than any other club on campus. So. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So, uh, issues such as earthquake in Turkey, um, you know, bombings in Syria, uh, hunger in, in India and Bangladesh, um, you know, students not being able to go to school because they don't have the uh, resources to you know, take care of their bodies. These if students care about these issues, campus should be a place where they can uh, create initiatives to um, be able to support um, these issues around, around the world. And, you know, as a USG member, what is the most important thing is to understand what uh, these students want to achieve through their clubs and um, how they're going to achieve them. And, uh, based on these conversations, we can come up with uh, the proper budget that they need to uh, extend aid to these countries, extend aid to these people. And, you know, if we are an open environment, an open place for students to come to, uh, to address these issues, then they will be more willing to take action. And, you know, this is the point of going to university, not just maybe in a fact here, but uh, all around the world. So um, I believe that these these uh, funding these clubs and uh, creating these communities are very, very important. And uh, I'd like to um, you know congratulate my uh, fellow candidate. <laughs> yes, Thank you. Um, for achieving all that he's achieved. And uh, I would like to follow in your footsteps. That's very sweet. Thank you very much. Thank you all. For our final question, we would like to ask, why you? What characteristics, accomplishments, and plans make you appealing to the general student body to lead them this upcoming year? Think of this as your closing statement. We'll do Dioza, Shadman, and Tanzina. Um, so this is really the most important question. And I think that if students want to vote for me, it would be for the reason that my most genuine and my most genuine and persistent idea throughout USG has been my commitment to the students. Um, I can't really explain in many words how committed and how much I want to help the student body. I think one of my biggest passions in life has always been advocacy work, and I want to dedicate my life to that. And in my mind, the way that change works is that I can't really get far if I'm not even helping my community at home. Um, so. Fordham is my home and Fordham is also my community. So if someone votes for me, it's for the fact that I will always persist in that and, and continue that belief, right? Um, and just in terms of why I am, you know, eligible or a good choice, and we're all good choices, mind you. So however it goes, it's fine. But I, right now, am one of the most you know, long-standing members on USG, and I've seen USG from start to finish. I know the nuances and I know the intricate workings better than anyone else. And I think that because of this expertise in USG, I really know what needs to be done for the following year and all of the work that I want to accomplish. Um, and I think that my campaign really reflects that in terms of really boosting student engagement, but also turning away from this idea that we're just Fordham. You know, we're not Fordham. We're in Manhattan. We have so many vibrant communities around us and we need to showcase that and really give students the resources that they need. And um, we've never had a scholarship before, but if elected, um, I've already started working on a student scholarship funded specifically from USG. Um, so I really just want to work for the students and give them every possible opportunity to experience a college experience that's one of the best that they can have. So vote for me is vote for you. We'll tell you for president. Thank you. So first and foremost, uh, USG has done a fantastic job so far uh, doing everything that they have done around campus. But um, a very big issue that I wanted to address as president is 
the fact that not many students know that there is a president, secretary, treasurer, vice president on campus that they can go to to help them navigate these issues that they're having around campus. And I believe that I am uh, I make a difference on campus by the small things. I'll talk to someone new every day. I'll speak to people on the elevator. I'll speak to people on the ramp, and I'll speak to people as I'm walking out of the school. I'll speak to people as I'm walking up the stairs. And through these small conversations, I learn about the uh, the goals, the dreams, the the things that people who are going here want from uh, the university. And I believe that through my uh, you know, ability to speak to students all around campus and uh, being a presence that is a friend, I can um, help everyone you know, complete the dreams that, that they're here to, to uh, accomplish. And um, the club leaders host the events that they need to host. And uh make campus the most inclusive place for students from anywhere um okay so why tansy month right i'm going to be very honest with you guys i see a lot of problems within usg over these last few years that i know cannot be resolved without restructuring usg the way these positions function, the way these, first of all, the committees, love them. Like, absolutely grateful that these committees exist. But the way these positions function do not prioritize students. So why me? Because I honestly am going to put in the painstaking work to restructure these positions and restructure USG to be a place where students feel heard. There is a reason that people don't know that there is a USG president, secretary, treasurer, et cetera. There is a reason people didn't even know that this, incredible committee that Yelza made a CSM even existed until this semester. Like there is a reason students, I'm so sorry. There are the reason students are not aware about any of this and it has to do with the inner workings of USG and the structure of USG. That's one part of it. The other part of it is me personally, who am I and what have I been doing since not since I joined USG, but since I joined Fordham. <coughs> so I have been taking action independently from USG I've went out of my way to, to boost the petition post for the past fail uh, thing, which was the past fail petition, which was for uh, during the COVID era. And it was for the mental health of students because students were feeling like their mental health was not being advocated for. And again, once I did that, it was it boosted it to over 2000 students that saw it because I did that. <clears throat> again, nothing to do with USG. I just did this independently. And then um, also, in terms of like organizing political action against the 6% tuition raise, that is just me independently doing this because I had multiple students reach out to me asking me how can they do this, and I set up a meeting to figure out how we can do this. So with me as president, you're going to get someone who has been taking action since the beginning. I am the only candidate who has been going out of my way as a student to help other students, and I'll continue that. Thank you all so much for answering our questions. For the next section of the debate, we'll open the floor to questions from the audience. So if you're attending Zoom, we'll read out those submitted questions first, and then we'll move on to some in-person questions. Yeah, so I'm going to read the next part of it. Um, we will do 20 minutes for a Q&A section. I will alternate in-person and online to make sure that the students who weren't able to be here in person also get as many of their questions answered as we can. Um, it'll be the same as the last one where each candidate will get two minutes to respond. If your question is to one candidate in, in particular, please um, voice them at the beginning. For the candidates, they will still be doing your timing, so still look at them for that. Um, I will start with a question from in person. Um, does anyone have one that they want to start with? Um, I have a question for Tindima. You've talked a lot about restructuring USG, even though you've been on USG for a couple of years now and witnessed two constitutional amendments to USG. What makes this different from what I've done, from what DLS has done, to change how USG operates and advocates for other students? 
why are you any different than what we've done already? That was during your time in your student. Beautiful question. Thank you for asking that. I believe you guys, like I said, these committees are absolutely incredible and they are a golden part of USG. And in terms of restructuring, what I am talking about is not adding a committee, which you guys have done, and which, again, literally the golden part of USG without, it doesn't even need to be said. But the way that USG works in terms of the chair people for these committees, again, I was a chairperson, Dielza was a chairperson, and Lydia was a chairperson. We know how much work we are putting into these committees. We are putting into one single event, and we know how much help we're getting in these events. And the answer is not a lot. All of those events I have done for the entire Sexual Assault Awareness Month, uh, two of the events were brand new, like it was for the first time that they were ever done, and they received the most engagement that USG has received in literally this entire year. Um, but those events took a lot, and it was very much me organizing, leading, and creating this event. So I believe a, a, a important change to the USG structure is that each chairperson should have two VPs with them. So it should be two students who are running for VP, who are, it's almost like the way e-boards work. There is someone who has, who holds kind of like responsibility for helping plan events, helping do this, 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 et cetera, for all of these events, for all of this effort that we put in, there should be someone helping us with this so that we can do even better. So that we don't essentially have to like take our blood, sweat, and tears to have an event as amazing as we've had for all for the entirety of sexual assault, assault awareness month. And that's just one of them. I don't know if I have time for more, but I have a ton more and I have a QR code where you guys can just see all of these. It is it's written super clearly everywhere. And I invite you, I invite you all to, to read it. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Great, so I'm gonna move on to a uh, question from online first, um, for the next one. And this is directed to all three candidates. Uh, it says, currently the Gabelli building closes around 11 p.m. and the Quinn Library upper floors are closed on weekends and the Law Library closes at 1 a.m. The only option students have to study late at night on campus are either in the open areas at Quinn Library or in their dorm rooms. Are you going to use your position in USG to advocate for later, later, clo later closings? And if so, how do you plan to push for this? Um, I'll start with you, Dielza. Um, yeah, certainly. Um, that's a great question. And I think that that's already something that we've um, started advocating for in our chair facilities this year has been a true rock star. Uh, Gabriel Garcia has really worked endlessly and tirelessly to really advocate for students on behalf of all of these items and all of the more, you know, like the bathroom items, but you know, that's really necessary. But I think that that will 100% be a part of um, my campaign and my administration. And it's things like that, that a lot of people don't think about that are super, super important and the work that USG is doing continually. Um, and this is a conversation we've had many, many times and reached out to many people to um, correct that. But also it's the allocation of resources um, and funding that leads to these issues in terms of like just a broad, broader university um, capacity, but certainly, and I think that that's super, super important. And something that Fordham faces, Fordham Lincoln Center faces, that's one of the worst issues that now we've had many, many meetings about um, and met with President Tetlow about is the idea of space on campus. And space on campus has been so, so limited, especially because we have 70 plus um, clubs now, but that's no excuse. We should be able to have 120 clubs and be able to provide the access um, to space on campus the way that every other student um, has a right to, right? Um, and specifically for academic reasons, I think that's even more so um, because, you know, we are a university. So um, providing the resources and capacity to have that is super, super important and will be a constant for me and my administration. Great. Uh, Shadman? Yeah, so, you know, that is, is definitely a very big issue. And if the people want the, the Quinn Lab Library to be open past 11 p.m., uh, for the Law Library to be open past 8 p.m., um, I will definitely speak with the people who um, address it address the the um, curfews for these spaces but what i would advise students for a, a temporary issue, a temporary 
solution is to go into the lower stick building. And if there are spaces around the lower stick building that's open, go into those classrooms and do your studying there. Um, use Mercury and B to, to um, you know, uh, reserve your, your rooms and spaces because if I can't find space, I'll probably go to the third floor system and there's usually a room open there that I can study and um, those spaces are usually very big so um, you can bring your friends there and do group study there. Okay. Um, I would like probably, most realistically, I would probably reach out to Christina and say that our students are requesting, Christina is like a point person for like all club stuff. Um, but I'll probably reach out to her and say that like students are requesting a later time for libraries. And I am thinking right now, I'm considering what a later time uh, kind of indicates, which would be that the workers who are working in those libraries, they would be working later times because we need people to work in these libraries when they are open. So I'm guessing the closing times of the libraries have something to do with when these workers are going home. So we would probably that would probably be a long process of trying to figure out how that works and whether we can kind of change everyone's, you know, jobs. <laughs> um, and it would probably result in proposing alternatives instead if there is no possibility to be able to have workers stay later so that students can stay later. Um, and yeah, what I would do is communicate like the, what what I just did right now. Like tell you guys the whole thought process. Whatever it is that we concluded after I would go to my meetings and with these people and try to figure it out, I would communicate the whole thing and how it works and like what factors are, are, are out of USG's control and what factors are in USG's control and what we can do to help. And I would make that like a very public statement, maybe on like the USG's account or something to let people know that like we heard you, we took action, we had a bunch of meetings and you know, this is the result. Either they're open later or they're not because of this, this, this. And if they're not, then you can go to the sixth floor. We're going to open a new uh, community room for you guys, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. Um, I will open the floor to another in-person question. If anyone has one. Yes. Hi. Um, here's uh, Free Alter, uh, Chair of Operations. Uh, this is a question for all the candidates. Um, if you know me or talk to me about anything related to operations, uh, you'll know that um, we have so many issues related to the number of clubs on campus, the space, uh, and the funding. Um, and so I just wanted to know if there were um, any avenues you had thought of to solve this problem of there being uh, too many clubs, but at the same time, um, uh, trying to, you know, uh, approve more clubs and have not like a cap on the number of clubs and create as many student clubs as the students want, I guess, or can keep going. Okay, we'll start with Shabnam this time and then do Chansey, Man, and Bielsa. Well, it depends on demand. Uh, at first, when you're trying to make a club, you have to uh, fill out a petition and um, get all the people who are interested in joining the club to uh, sign the petition. And if you get enough people, then uh, we will look at the petition and see if we can approve it or not. But you know, if there are not that many people who want to support this club or who want to join this club, then you know, it's, it's, it, it would not be the best way to allocate the university's money for this club that there's not that much interest because we are also trying to uh, improve student retention rates in clubs and uh, trying to get everyone more uh, active in, in, in uh, the community. So if we have these random clubs, they'll just take up the budget from the clubs that uh, are more uh, active on campus. So, uh, in the um, you know hiring process of the clubs, um, we would just look at the petitions, and if there's not enough list, then I apologize. You cannot make a new club. But if you have the total number of people, then yeah, by all means. Can see. 
honestly, what I would do is an idea that me and Bree talked about when, when I would go uh, to get my art club approved, um, which actually took a full over a year for this art club to get approved. Like I was in a near fatal accident and the one year anniversary of my accident passed and this club was still not approved. So I understand the frustration and I also understand that you as a chairperson have to do so much work for just looking through all of these clubs and like figuring everything out, which is why I believe, first of all, like there should be a separation between uh, humanitarian kind of clubs and uh, Fordham functioning clubs. So like OPS is a Fordham functioning sort of club. So I believe for the Fordham functioning clubs, OPS facilities, uh, basically the, not clubs, committees, the committees that make like the street lighting event, the committees that prove your clubs, the committees that add tampons and like the six floor bathroom, all of those committees should have have one VP with them so that there is always someone just helping because it is a lot to take on on your own as a chairperson. But that's a separate topic. Um, when it comes to spacing issues, I think what we were talking about a while ago in terms of connecting clubs that have similar ideas. So for example, I have an art club. If someone wants to make a calligraphy club, we can make that calligraphy club. It's almost like under the umbrella of an art club. So there will be the arts, almost like what we're doing with what I'm trying, what I will do with the committees if I'm president, which is like the activist humanitarian committees versus the Fordham functioning committees, like kind of dividing it and having under having them under umbrellas. I will do the same with the clubs. So like all of the arts clubs would be under one umbrella and they would essentially be working together, which would also increase participation exponentially because these clubs would have a lot of uh a lot of uh, work, uh, a lot of meetings and activities and et cetera that they're doing alongside each other. So it's kind of like like three birds, one stone, you know. Um, yeah, so I think that we've had this conversation now like a hundred times. Um, and I think that operations is a very, very hard job to take on. But I think that for USG, it's super important um, to be reflective of the student body. So I think that when we're thinking about this and scrutinizing it, it's this idea that we don't have the right to turn away certain clubs um, for the reason that they might not have 50 members. Because realistically, if they make the um, number of students on their petition, that club should have the right to be approved, depending if everything you know goes well on every other part of the application, what have you. But I don't think that we as USG members can really say that you know this club doesn't deserve to be on campus because you know there's not enough. Um, attention from students because of it. And I think that that's a really, really big problem. Um, and I also think that a part of my campaign plan in terms of having every single USG representative um, go, and I think our conversations really inform this decision for me, because I think having that connection and relationship for USG members will be really, really helpful in terms of actually, it'll be like a case study uh, for each member because they can see how the clubs are operating um, and seeing like if they're actually having the events that they're saying they're having, if they're having the meetings that they're saying they're having, and what does that attendance look like? Um, in terms of space, I think that that needs to go on a very um, administrative level, and those are the meetings that I've already been having and the conversations that have been continuing um, in terms of trying to reimagine these things and really provide students with things that they haven't been able to have. So, for example, there are some spaces on campus, like the President's Lounge, that's just not allowed for uh, club campuses. I mean, campus clubs. So that's just not there, in my opinion. So I think that those conversations need to continue to be had, but I think um, in terms of like the club to club basis, it needs to be that we are constantly having this conversation and scrutinizing that more so. Um, in a way that, you know, we're making sure that these clubs are not going null and void, but also that we're uplifting voices and not, not just merging clubs together because they might have similar ideas, because that I think could provide a whole list of ethical issues in itself. Great, um, so I will go back to another virtual question. Um, this one is, what is your personal philosophy for how you will represent individuals in the community? We will start with Tanzima, then do, to go to Dielza and then to Shabin. Um, beautiful question. Um, in terms of my philosophy for how I will be structured for, I mean, not that, but um, in terms of my philosophy when it comes to, uh, if you guys vote for me, it kind of goes into something I learned in my Peace and Justice Studies class, which is politics of care. So I've mentioned restructuring USG and I don't think I have enough time to like go into that. But what I mean when I say that 
is embodying what politics of care embodies, which is having a structure that prioritizes generosity and care and giving to Florida. So I don't necessarily mean a one-off thing like a committee or a scholarship, which are both beautiful ideas, but I mean having USG as a whole, everyone involved in USG, having that same viewpoint of we are here to represent the students. If the students are complaining about something, it is not our job to tell them to stop. <laughs> like it is our job as United Student Government members to advocate for these students to higher ups and figure out the solutions. And if we, if there is no solution, then we communicate that to students, but we don't just stop there. We tell students their choices. We tell them that they, if they want, they could do a, a, a legal, rightful, um, uh, they can take political action, which Fordham gives them the right to, which is also great. And if we want, we can tell them, I mean, if they don't want to do that, then we can tell them that they can, you know, do a petition or emails or et cetera, or we can tell them that they can join the committee for uh, uh, making change. Like, I want USG to reflect my personal philosophy on life, which is to live with generosity, live to give. Don't live to, as like a performative space of like, I'm in student, student government, it should not be performative, it should be very authentic and, and true. Uh, beautifully said, and I think that just to reiterate a lot of the same sentiments, for me, it's always been generosity, and I think that what's super important to me is that, you know, I think my philosophy of USG is going to be the same as my philosophy of life. Um, I'm the child of two immigrants from a war-torn country, and I've seen firsthand the effects that, you know, regional conflicts like that have on a person's life and what that means, um, and living in such a a different place and facing all of these injustices and different hardships. And I think for me, it's always been that I've wanted to help people. That's my calling in life and that's my greatest passion. So what I've tried to do for USG is the exact same. And I think that I've had so many conversations now with students where they feel comfortable enough to talk to me and feel that, you know, I wanna be a person who's gonna be supportive no matter what. I think if you talk to any USG member, they'll tell you that I'm not just interested in them as, members of USG, but I'm also interested in them in their lives. And I always start off my meetings by asking, you know, for updates on everyone and seeing, you know, it's just, and again, this goes back to this idea of community. It's how we can be representatives of our student body, but also engage in a way that we're creating this beloved community. And that's really essentially what I want to do and continue to do, because realistically, like if a person is voting for me, I want them to know that their greatest interests are in my hands. Um, and I will always uphold what is best for them and what they need more than anything else. Um, and in a very genuine, wholehearted way. So yeah, I just wanna help the students and that has always been my priority and will always continue to be my pr priority regardless of USG or not. Great, um, Shabin. So um, my fellow uh, candidates, I have certain things that I certainly agree with. And to add on, I would say that to address each individual student's um, desires and needs um, and what they want uh, foreign communities to look like, uh, the way that we can address this is by speaking with the students more and speaking with them on an individual okay. level. And uh, through understanding more and more students, uh, you know, there are core values that we all share of, you know, togetherness, caring, giving, uh, and, you know, safety that we uh, all prioritize. And, you know, we, we should try to find these commonalities that we can uh, use to, you know, uh, as themes for, for the events that we want to hold and, and um, for the uh, spaces on campus. Um, great. So that is all the time we had for our Q and A section. Um, so this is now the end of the USG debate, um, the presidential debate. Thank you all for joining us today, whether in person or on Zoom. Um, we will have an article posted about this in the coming days, as well as the Zoom recording will be posted. Um, so if you wanted to watch anything again, or if on Zoom, if you joined late, um, you will be able to see all of that. Yeah, thank you. 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 Thank you.